Greetings viewers and welcome back. Originally I was planning to have this video be the beginning of the painting process on my Hero Specs Exocrine model. Unfortunately the uh, weather today is quite rainy so I'm probably not going to get a chance to get outside and prime him. So I'm just going to have to jump right into my uh, Harpy slash Hivecrone. Um, as of right now I'm waiting for FedEx to drop off my codex so I don't know what time that will be. So I'm just going to jump into this. I know I had some mixed reviews as far as doing fast motion or real time when uh, making these videos and doing stuff. Unfortunately, I'm probably just going to do the uh, skipping and maybe some fast motion stuff with the assembly here and just kind of come in and show you some of the little minor things that I'm doing in real time. Just because hopefully most of you know how to assemble models and I've shown you how to scrape all the mold lines off and that would just make for a really long video even in fast time just because of how long it takes to get all the pieces and get them glued together and then wait for those to dry so I can stick them to the next section and so forth. So I'm just going to give you a little idea of what I'm planning on doing with this particular model and then uh, again I'll just come back every now and again and show you what I've done up to that point and then when it comes to the painting I'll probably just try some real time and fast time stuff just to see what you guys like and prefer and kind of try and make everybody happy because again there was some mixed reviews on that. Now um, the Hero Specs Exocrine was a little bit easier to magnetize just because the only difference in them was the head. Um, these particular two options that you have for this um, offer different spikes and shell uh, carapace pieces here. The guns are different. They have different uh, little attachment things. So what I'm planning on doing is just making one model that kind of incorporates both, um, depending on how that works out for me. Just because, I'm, again, I'm not going to really be able to magnetize all the differences on these two. I probably could, but it probably wouldn't end up being worth the time and headache dealing with it. So... I'm just going to kind of make my own version of it and then whatever I decide is the better of the two when I go to play I'll just say that it's that during the game and we'll just use it as that. So the first thing just looking at the uh, this is the harpy on the front here I really like the spikes that are on this thing so I kind of want to incorporate those I know just from looking at the sprue that the actual carapace piece itself is the same and then just these little spike attachments are different the way they plug into the holes so I'll just end up probably using these one of the major differences in the head for the hive crone is instead of having this tongue here, he's got a little gun coming out of his mouth. So my hope is that I can still use this same head and just put that gun tongue piece in there. If not, then I'll just have to go ahead and use that whole head on here and he'll just have some different spikes on there, which it doesn't really look all that bad. Let's see. Yeah. So you can see it right here. So that's exactly what it would look like. So I'm either going to be able to put that gun tongue in the first mouth I showed you, or I'll just use that one. It's not a big deal either way. Um, one of the other major differences is these two guns here on the Harpy. He has uh, those, and the Hive Crone has these little sacks that kind of feed the, uh, the gun that's coming out of his mouth. So we'll probably end up not using those, and I want to use the uh, these two guns and then have the gun mouth and then again either way I can say it's a harpy because he's using those and then if the hive crone he's using his gun um, coming out of his mouth. One of the other things that the hive crone has that the harpy doesn't is these little uh, tentaclid things that stick underneath the wings. Um, I guess they're supposed to act like missiles or something for other anti-air or maybe air to ground missiles. So I'd like to use those on there. And if I'm going to end up doing that, what I'm probably going to do is magnetize them. So that'll be one of the things I can come back and I'll show you how I do one or two of them in real time. Uh, maybe some fast time or something and then uh, have those on there. And if they're magnetized, again, and I'm not using them during the game, I just won't stick them on there. And then if I say, hey, I'm using a hive crone, I'll just throw them on there and uh, pluck them off as they're used. Because if they're missiles, then I'm sure he only gets four of them. Again, still waiting on the codex. Haven't been able to confirm all that stuff yet. Um... And there's another attachment too that goes underneath. I think the only thing you really tell on this is there's a big like vein spike thing coming out of the bottom of the hive crone. And the harpy has like a little, I guess it's supposed to be like a spore mine distribution system. So I'll probably use that on there. And I really like the look of this tail. I know that's probably a biomorph upgrade with the scythe tail, but it just looks cool and I can use that on there and uh, I'll be fine with it. And uh, that should just kind of accomplish what I'm trying to do incorporating again both models into one so that I don't have to worry about magnetizing it or anything. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to get to snipping these things out, trimming off the plastic, and then I'll come back and uh, revisit with you guys what I've done and just show you some of the little sub-assemblies. And then before I magnetize those little uh, tentaclids, I'll go ahead and do some of that in real time so you can see what I'm doing with it. All right, so I have my sub-assemblies here, uh, including just the wings that are separated right now. Um, I was trying to decide whether or not to attach these now or later. 
and I thought about it and if I use my little container for that wash that I made um, so I can dunk them in there and wash it it's not going to fit because the wings are going to be too wide for the container so I'm pretty decided on just leaving the wings off for now and I'll have to attach them after the, uh, the wash process I'll just have to be careful how I glue them so that I don't get any super glue fumes leaking out and creating any problems um, so this is what uh, these are all the parts and everything that I chose on here I actually ended up going with the hive crone head the uh, tongue gun that I said I wanted does fit in either head but I like this one better with the two rows of spikes the other one looked kinda silly to me so I didn't use that and then I just have these spikes here on the, uh, the carapace and like I said I have the kinda it almost looks like little spiked sphincters here I think it's supposed to be like a spore mine dropper with the spike coming out and then the uh, little scythe tail here so I think he actually looks pretty cool and then I'll just show you what he kinda looks like with the wings on and the way the wings attach is there's a uh, little nub here in the body section and then one on the side of the body there so this one goes in the front this one goes and runs along the side of the body so there's quite a few points of contact that run along the, uh, the side there so you can attach it so hopefully it won't give me too much trouble after I've washed it and trying to get it put on there so this is what he'll end up looking like So. I'm done with those. Now like I said what I wanted to do was use the uh, the gun arms here and these guns that he has on here they uh, right here that main nub there is where the main part of the wing goes in and then this one that's down there is where the gun arm attaches and there's kinda it's not just a little rounded ball there's actually kinda squared joints in there so that once it goes in it fits a specific way and then th these little ridges here actually snap into uh, well not really snap in but they kinda go along with the contours of the body so it almost just kind of melts right into it like it's coming out of the uh, the belly area there so you can see that so then that'll happen on both sides now the thing with these gun arm options is that you have the option of using a strangle thorn cannon or the twin linked heavy venom cannon and the way that those come is this whole arm has kind of a long post sticking out of it and as you can see I drilled a hole in it so I'm going to explain that in just a moment so the guns come at like this and they're kind of halved so they have a little bit of a groove in there where you can see this is obviously going to slide in and attach so you have your option of gluing whichever one you want on there so what I'm doing is I want to be able to take let's say if I decide I want to take heavy venom cannons I want to be able to put this on there but I also want to have the option of taking it off now once I paint this if I leave paint on there it'll probably be enough that it'll be kind of tight and go on there and maybe stay but putting it on and off a couple times may scrape that paint off and then it's going to be really loose and I'm going to be kind of out of luck for uh, keeping it, making it stay. So what I've done is I've already magnetized the other one and then I'm just gonna go through and kinda show you on camera how I did it. So as you can see this is the same thing for the ones that I've already magnetized. These are the two halves that go together and you can see there's a magnet inside either one of those. So once I put this together as though it's gonna be glued and we've got the whole piece that just has kinda that little slot again. These, this has magnets in it where the holes were on the other one and this just slides right in there. Now again the tightness of it will hold it but then those magnets will just give it a little bit extra to keep it from falling off and then all I have to do is pluck that off pick up my other gun take it slap it on there and now I have two different gun options that are magnetized. So real quick like I said I just drilled a whole kind of scientific process of eyeballing the center the best that I could and uh, I kind of tried my best to make sure that they were the same so that it didn't matter which side went to what so I didn't have to specify if it was the left venom cannon or the right strangle thorn cannon so they should both be for the most part able to hold on to each other so it doesn't matter which gun goes on where so again I started with just the hole through the uh, center post and what I'm going to be using is my 1 16th inch magnets which are the really tiny ones that I showed you in my magnet video um, I don't use these too often they're the same ones that I kind of use for my troops here so like this Imperial Guardsman he's got the option of using a flamer or whatever the two-handed special weapon so I've got a magnet in his hand there and then a magnet in the bottom of the gun because obviously that's the smallest that I can go without completely destroying the model putting it on there and magnetizing it so alright we got our hole here we've got our venom cannon that goes on there so I'm gonna do this in halves because I want to be able to hide these magnets I don't want holes drilled through everything that you can see this piece here you're not gonna see once the gun gets attached to it so all I do is I just take my one half that I'm working on for now and I want to make sure that the magnets are gonna line up so without eyeballing it I know that these holes are gonna line up because all I'm gonna do is take let me turn this so you can see it once it's lined up on there I'm gonna take my drill 
right where it's going to go when I insert it on there to use it. And I'm just going to kind of drill down a little bit. Not too hard, but just enough that I'm going to take some of the plastic off where this thing is touching. So as little a bit as I did, now if you look at it you can see there's a dimple there, which now I've got my hole lined up so where I need to put my magnet, I just need to make sure that I get it to the right depth. So all I'm going to do after that is just take my drill, go right back in the hole. I don't have to have my guide anymore. I already know where the, the drill bit's going to end up. And then just kind of lightly drill it using my little hand hobby drill. I'm not using my power drill for this because it'd probably go all the way through before I could stop it. And then just get to a depth that I think is about right. And then all I have to do is just to test it is I'll take uh, one of my little files here and I kind of put one of the, the magnets on the tip there just so that it's holding it for me. And I'll take it and kind of put it right on there and just drop it down in the hole. So as you can see, well, let's see if it's a focus. So you can see the magnets in the hole and it's pretty level. So I actually got that one pretty good just uh, on the first try. And if I didn't get it deep enough, I'll just drill, drill a little bit more and just keep doing a little bit at a time because I don't want to obviously go too much and then the magnet falls all the way down to the bottom and I can't get to it or it's useless because it's farther from the, uh, the other magnet I have. So that, that piece is done and then I just have to go to the other half, make sure I get it lined up on the opposite side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put my uh, drill bit right through the uh, center post guide hole just kind of drill just a little bit, dig out some of that plastic, make a nice defined area where my drill bit's going to go. And again, I went from smooth plastic to now having a little dimple there knowing where I'm going to put my magnet. So then I just kind of grab it again. I try and make it as flat as possible. Obviously, holding in my hand and eyeballing it probably isn't the most, again, scientific method available. However, so far it's worked for me. Um, the magnets at least have enough pull on them that even if it's not completely flat and lined up, they're still going to want to attract each other. So it's still going to give me that kind of tension that uh, I'm going to need to hold them together. So again, all I do is I still have my magnet here on the end of my file, kind of drop it down in the hole, and we pretty much nailed it again on the depth. A little bit deep, but it's not going to be enough that it'll make a difference. So polar magnet out. So now we've got our two, uh, two sections magnetized. Now the biggest thing, and I mentioned this in my magnet video, is the polarity. You've got to be really careful when you're magnetizing stuff like this because if you don't pay attention to which side is what, your magnets are actually going to push away. So if I did this completely wrong and put the wrong magnets on there, I would put this on here and it would probably shoot off because it's not going to want to attract and it's going to you know, try to get rid of the, uh, the opposing magnet. So you've got to really make sure that you get these set up right. And typically, like I mentioned, the way that I do this is I'll take uh, something that I've already got magnetized, especially since I've already done the other arm. And what I'll do is I'll take a magnet and drop it on the piece that's on here. So if I want to magnetize these first, this magnet, the way that it sits on this post is going to go exactly on here. So anything that's exposed on this side is going to go directly inside of the other piece. So just like that, now I've got a magnet on either side and I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and mark it. So when I see that black marker, I know that if, it, let's say, I drop it or maybe it flips over on my little file that I'm going to use to transfer from one thing to the other, I know that that black side, no matter what, is going to have to go in. Now, typically, when I get super glue on it, it just strips that off. I don't, I don't know why, but the magnet will actually come off, so i got to make sure I have it right and ready to go as soon as I drop it in there because once I do, it's gone. So, again, I've got both magnets on here. They're black on either side. And then I just have to figure out which one I want to do first. So since I know this is going to line up here on this side, right, just like that. And then all I'm going to do is actually pull it, and it's going to strip that magnet off. Oops, I pulled the one off the other side. Okay, let's try this again. I think I did that with my finger. So again, I'm going to take the one that I've already drilled the hole. There is no magnet in there. I'm going to snap it on there. So now that it's going to line up perfectly because I've got that hole drilled for it and I'm just going to pull it away so that it comes off. So now again you can see the shiny side over here. Let me get rid of this one. And then all I'm going to do is use my file and pull that right off. So now you can see that the black side is pointing out and I know that black side needs to go towards the gun. So I can just leave that there and then I need my super glue. 
And then all I need to do is I just need to put a little bit, because you got to think this hole is just big enough for the magnet to fit in there. So if I gush super glue all over the place and I smash that magnet down, it's going to squish out even more. Then that super glue is going to get in the cavity where that little kind of post goes for the, the weapon itself that goes into the gun. And uh, it's going to be too full. It's not going to want to go in because it's caked with super glue. So I got to be very careful using my little fine tip. I'm going to drop it all the way down in the hole, get a little bit of super glue in there. It's all going around the edges instead. Okay, so I got my super glue on there. It's a little bit more than I wanted, but I can wipe it off. I've got my handy paper towel there. So again, making sure I have the black side that I got with the marker. I'm gonna punch it straight down in that hole. I'm gonna squish it for a second. It, the super glue kind of creates a little bit of suction, so it kind of pulls the magnet away for me so I don't have to worry about it pulling away again with the file. And then I just use my paper towel. I want to wipe off that super glue while it's still wet before it has a chance to dry and again cake up and create any future issues for me. So now the magnet's in there, it's flush, and then all I've got to do is wait for it to dry. So now I can move on to the other side. So again, we're just looking at the other side. We've got our magnet with the black Sharpie side facing outward. And where do we go? Here it is. Here's the other half of that, uh, the heavy venom cannon. So I'm just going to put it on this side where it belongs. It fits right perfectly into the hole that we've already made in this thing. I'm going to slide it off, making sure the silver side stayed out. Use my file, got my black side, and then all I need to do again, just put a little dab of super glue inside. Okay. Again, double check, make sure my Sharpie side face down, stuff it in the hole, slide away, and then use my paper towel to wipe off all the... Uh, excess super glue and make sure my magnet stays flush and flat down in the hole the way it's supposed to. So yet again then we got to wait for this to dry. So while we're waiting for that to dry now I'm going to show you the other thing over this model that I'm going to magnetize and that's the uh, the little tentaclids which are supposed to go for the hive crown. Again they're just some kind of missiles that are used for vehicles or whatever it is you're shooting at. Um, there are only so many uses since you get four of them. I wanted the option to be able to pull them off so I can remember how many I use because I've got a lot of stuff to remember but what's going on. The last thing I need to remember is how many missiles I shot and I don't want to be accused of cheating because I shoot five instead of four. So the way these things are designed to mount to the model is you have this little bug thing with all these little tentacles and as you can see on the bottom here they have all these little ridges um, just kind of part of their own little body carapace setup that they've got going on. And then the mounts for these things are these little tiny spiky mounts that almost kind of look like sphincters themselves. Now this didn't come with a hole in it. I drilled that hole, same thing with the bottom of this. And the reason I did that is again, this I'm gonna to use to attach to the bottom of the wing. So if you look at the box, they kind of show you this is the underside as the model's flying and the tentaclids kind of can mount underneath here and trail out the back. So this thing is gonna get stuck on there so you're not even gonna see any of the holes that are in this thing, whether it's the front or the back. Um, and then the way these mount is you can see they're kind of angled. One's a, the one in the front is a little bit lower than the one in the back. And then the way that works is it just snaps right into the, uh, the lower section of the body. So you can see it fits right into those ridges there, again, just like that. And they're all identical. So I've tried all four of the uh, tentaclids on the same one, and everything is identical in the way that they line up. So then all I had to do... And again, I just did this to kind of save time on camera. This was a solid piece of plastic. All I did was just once I had it lined up where I know that's where it's going to mount, I just take my drill and punch straight through all the way through the mount, all the way into the tentaclid, and then just drill down a little bit. Now, these things aren't exactly heavy, but they're a little bit heavy for those small magnets to be upside down and maybe moving around and bouncing as you're moving this thing on the table. Um, I wasn't so sure that they're going to be that strong that they were going to be able to hold up to it on top of the pressure that's going to kind of be created again once these are painted it's going to have a little bit more tight tolerance holding it but i didn't want to rely on that again if i'm taking these things on and putting them off then or taking them off and putting them on i don't want to have to worry about the paint being taken off and then uh, not wanting to stick because again it's not as tight as it used to be so i drilled the hole deep enough to put two magnets in there inside the body of this and this thing obviously is just as big as it is i'm going to end up using probably two or three um, I believe I measured it and three was uh, just about to the bottom hole and again where you won't see it because it's up against the wing. So I'm going to just go ahead and stick my two magnet stack in here and then in here and I'm going to have to again use my marker and then once I get one of these set I'm going to check the polarity just like I did on the uh, 
the other gun that I just showed you, just to make sure that no matter which tentaclid I put on there, I don't want to have to worry about, okay, this is the far left one, this is the far right one. If they're all identical, I can grab them out of a box and just slap them on whichever one, and they're going to fit, and they're going to stay, and I know it's going to line up. And I kind of try to do that for all my weapons and all my figures and everything that I magnetize. I usually try and stay with the same polarity, whether it's a gun, an arm, those are all going to be the same. And then all the bodies and main components, you know, maybe for like a dreadnought or for a demon prince or for a... a tentaclid it's all going to be the same so theoretically i could take this tentaclid and stick it right on the arm of a carnifex and it would go so i that way i know and no matter which model i pick up i can use it as a guide so that i get my polarity just right so what i'm going to do is the same thing again i just showed you with the uh heavy venom cannon i'm going to go ahead and finish up the stranglethorn cannon and then i'm going to put two magnets in here and either two or three inside each one of these mounts and then once I get the mounts done, I'm going to glue them onto the wings. So those will all get done at the same time with the wings when I go ahead and wash them and or dip them in my wash and everything. So hope you guys helped. If you guys are planning on uh, magnetizing your model, if maybe I was too quick or didn't explain it or you couldn't see it very well on the camera, just please ask. Um, I'll be glad to show you something else or go over it with you how I did it, just in a little bit more detail. Um, so again, I'm going to go ahead and get these done, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll mostly be done with this model ready for painting. So in my haste to kind of show you how I magnetized all that stuff, I realized that I forgot to show you how I magnetized the actual piece that the gun part's attached to, which is the little uh, post that I drilled that center hole through, and then I, again, used as my guide to put those on with. So my issue with this was the fact that if you look at it this way, it was just a little bit too thick to simply stack two magnets and shove them in the hole and call it good and use either side as my uh, polarity to attach my guns. And unfortunately, it was just a little bit too thin to use three. When I put three magnets on there, it ended up sticking out just enough to prevent me from putting either one of those gun pieces on here. So I kind of had to improvise. Initially, I wanted to uh, sandwich one of those little plastic curly Q pieces of... Uh, plastic that came out when I drilled these holes between the two magnets but then the problem was the magnets would fall out the other side and I couldn't get them to sit still long enough to glue them and get them to line up and make sure they stayed lined up and didn't flip around and grab each other and pop out a hole so it started getting a little aggravating I had to kind of come up with my own way to do it and uh, the way that I decided on was I was actually going to use the same polarity of the magnet where it causes it to push them away and basically use that to my advantage and then just kind of have to keep them flush from the outside until it dries. And the way that I'm doing that is, is I'm using my two uh, flat files here and then I'm just going to kind of put them between one of these clamps and get them to stay. Once the super glue dries, the magnets will stay just where they are. They're not going to be strong enough to pop each other out and break that super glue, but they're going to stay where I need them and be flush again so that I can slide either one of those gun parts on and not run into any issues. So again, the hole is uh, empty right now. I've already checked my polarity by using the two gun halves. Marking the uh, either side of the mark or, or either side of the magnets with sharpies, and then I have them again. They're kind of really hard to see. The little tiny black dots on there, are just the sharpie side of the magnets. So basically, all I really need to do at this point is just drop my super glue in there, and I have them set up for me. Um, this is my left side. This is my right side, so I don't screw it up and then put it on the wrong way, and then my guns don't want to stay on again because the polarities are off. So pretty much all I have to do is just drop my super glue down in the hole. don't need a whole lot. I don't want it running all over. I'm going to probably end up having to use the files to kind of scrub some of it down and I don't want to stick them to these posts. So I just kind of wipe off a little bit of excess because all I really need is it down in the hole there. So then all I'm going to do is take my first one. I'm going to line it up with the hole, push it on there and make sure that it stays flush with that little post. Then all I have to do is grab my other magnet on my other file, find the hole, match it up. So now I've got them Again, sandwiched in there, the polarities are pushing against each other, but they're not able to go anywhere because they're pretty much stuck. And then all I'm going to do is just take my little clamp here, just slide it over, and now I've again got them flush in there. The magnets are pushing against each other, but they can't pop out because the file, they're clamped in place, and then all I have to do is wait for the super glue to dry. Now when the super glue dries, these things are probably going to stick a little bit to the plastic, not a big deal. They're not that strong that it's not going to, the super glue is not that strong that it's going to prevent me from breaking those apart. There'll probably be a little bit of extra glue or maybe some paint or pieces of plastic that it ripped off of the files themselves. Then I just use the file flat and uh, since they're all even 
and uh, run it across there, just knock off all the excess. And then all it does is it creates that smooth surface on here so that I can easily slide my uh, gun pieces on and off. So, sorry I forgot to show that to you. I'm glad I uh, caught it before it was too late and I glued everything and just had to explain it so I got to show you what I did. And uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and get working on magnetizing the other three tentaclids that I have so that I can get them attached to the wings and uh, we'll be back to see what it looks like. Alright, so I finished getting everything magnetized. The uh, tentaclids didn't actually take very long. Like I said, I just jammed two magnets in there. And then all I did was take a uh, stack of three and actually used it on each one of these. Um, just because it ended up being the exact same size as that. And I didn't want to have any issues with it falling down inside and flipping over on me without me knowing it. And then essentially becoming useless. So these are those little uh, things that I showed you that attach to the tentaclids. And... Uh, they just mount on there like that, and I've just got two on each wing, just kind of the way they showed you doing on the box. I actually kind of like the way it uh, it looks on there. It says in the instructions that you can attach them anywhere you want, but that seems to really be the only kind of logical place where you have any kind of real estate to put them on there. So you just have to kind of be careful putting them on there. they got those little spikes, so you just make sure that they fall down in the, uh, the little cavities that are in the chest there. And uh, they just stick on there like that, and they seem to be holding up pretty fine. Just uh, like I said, I used two magnets in the bodies and three on the posts, so that should definitely be more than enough, especially once these are painted. They're not exactly heavy, but they are kind of awkward, and uh, again, they're going to be upside down, so gravity will be fighting against them. Just wanted a little bit of extra insurance that they were going to stay on there. I also had the uh, glued the guns onto the monster himself. Again, the little tips are magnetized. Probably what I'm going to do when I go to prime this thing is I'm just going to wrap some blue uh, painter's tape around these posts just because I don't want any... Uh, primer or paint building up and making it any thicker. These things are a little bit tight to uh, stick on there, but again, they're uh, magnetized. I can use either option. I can switch them to either side, no big deal. Again, the magnets aren't a huge part in holding them on there. It's just a little bit of extra insurance that it's going to stay. So again, you can see they switch to either side, and then I have the uh, strangle thorn cannons as well. They just plug on there, and then again, I can swap sides and they go on either way. So, and then I also have my winged hive tyrant here in a Carnifex, again, just for uh, kind of a little scale comparison. I'm probably gonna move the camera around a little bit just so you can see uh, what it's gonna look like on, on the actual stand, and then I'll just kind of hold the wings on there and kind of show you a different view. So give me just a second. So here's just an alternate view. You can see the uh, wingspan on the Harpy Hive Crone is about the same as that of the winged hive tyrant. Um, as far as body size, obviously the harpy's a little bit bigger. It just has a, quite a longer tail, but torso just kind of pokes out a little bit more. It's almost like a Carnifex meets Flying Hive Tyrant size-ish, I guess. Um, and as you can see, the Carnifex a little bit bigger. Obviously doesn't have the wings. And then you can just kind of see he's going to be on the oval base. Comes with, one again, one of the flying stands. It only actually fits on there one way. Um, because of the angle of it, it doesn't go backwards. So when you put it on there, there's actually the side to side here. Actually, it has like a little cap on it, so it prevents it from going all the way in. And, uh, and when you get him put on the base, it kind of he looks like he's at a kind of a more of a downward swooping angle, like he's coming out the battlefield, which is kind of cool. Um, probably not going to glue him onto the stand though, just to make transport a little bit easier. That way, I can just pop him on and off and move them around. Maybe if I, Battle Foam comes out with a uh, tray that'll hold this thing that'll make it a little bit easier to pack it. And again, I'm just going to not glue the wings until I've washed it. Once I've passed that step, I'll go ahead and glue them on there and this will end up being just one piece minus the uh, magnetized tentaclids and the, the gun options. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I appreciate all the feedback, comments, likes, subscribers. Any feedback information you guys leave below is most appreciated. If you guys have any questions or you'd like to see anything else, please let me know. It did finally finish, stop raining today. The sun came out. I managed to get my Harrispec slash Exocrine primed. So the next video that I start jumping on will probably be getting him painted or going through the Codex, which I'm still waiting on FedEx to drop off. So we'll see how long that takes. And then uh, we can jump into the next video. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.